Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Quick question, do gamers recognize assets? This is actually a question that pops up every once in a while and recently showed up on Reddit. So over here, someone asked that same question. So hi everyone, I'm working on a game as a hobbyist, so this wouldn't impact me much as I'm not selling my game anyways, but I've heard a lot of using certain assets without modifying them is bad because players won't recognize them and think the developers are lazy or didn't put in the effort or something along those lines. So yep, this is indeed a question that comes up every now and then. I even made a video on this exact same topic. So yep, I've covered this topic in the video previously, but it bears repeating, and the answer is very simply, no. Players do not care about assets. So if you just want the quick 5 second answer to this question, do gamers recognize assets? Do gamers care about you using assets in your game? The answer is no. So definitely go ahead, use whatever assets you want to use, whatever assets you need, in order to make your vision come to life. Gamers only care about a good game. If you give them that, it doesn't matter what assets you need to use. Down here I write a bit more, so most players don't even know what on earth is a game engine. They just want fun games to play and nothing else. And yep, that is correct. If you ask the average Steam player, and again, keep in mind how Steam has something like, I think, 300 million monthly active users. That's an insane amount of people. Whereas Unity at GDC recently, they talked about how they had 5 million active Unity developers, which might sound that's a huge amount, but 5 million compared to 300 million, obviously that's a tiny, tiny minority. So yep, if you ask the average gamer what exactly is a game engine, they won't be able to tell you. Some of the more hardcore gamers might be able to tell you about Unreal Engine, Unity Engine, and so on. But most people, really, they just want fun games to play. They don't know what is a game engine, they don't know how games are made, and they don't really care about that. They really just want fun games. That's it. So if the game is fun, then the player does not care that you hand-build everything yourself from scratch, or that you use a hundred different asset packs and tools and put them all together. If the end result is great, then that's all that matters. That really is the final answer to this question. If you are concerned about using assets and players recognizing your assets and calling you lazy or something, then don't be. Just take whatever mental energy you would have used to make assets with whatever skills that you probably lack. Like for example, in my case, I'm only a programmer, so if I try to make a 3D model, <laughs> that is going to look like really very bad. And if you're an artist yourself and you try to make some complex system from scratch, it is probably not going to be very good. So that is why I usually say that the SSR, one of the best use cases for it, is simply use it to plug your skill gaps. So if you are just a programmer like me, then use the SSR to buy some art visuals. If you are just an artist, then use the SSR to plug your programming skills. You can buy tools to help you do all kinds of interesting game mechanics. And if you don't believe me when I say that gamers really only care about fun games to play, if so, then yep. As an example, here are a bunch of games that are very clearly using very recognizable Cindy asset packs, and they are still very successful with no negative reviews from players complaining about assets. So one example, Soulstone Survivors, 20,000 very positive reviews. So here's the game, you can see lots of low poly assets, lots of Cindy asset packs. And again, reviews very positive, 20,000. So that means this game has sold literally millions of dollars. And again, players do not care about assets, they just want a fun game to play. Another example that is even more clear, so here we have No Plan B. These are literally 100% Cindy assets, and the game actually even has some kind of nice close-up shots where we can actually see those assets. Literally the military pack and a bunch more. So you have over there, look at those masks, yep, those are from the heist pack, I believe. Then that little character with the ghillie suit, yep. Look at all these, these are all very clearly Cindy assets. And once again, reviews, very positive, 700 reviews. Then we have Perfect Heist 2. Now this one is literally using the demo scene from the heist pack. Here it is, the Polygon Heist, the Synthi pack. And here's the game, literally the exact same demo scene. So they didn't even need to make a different demo scene. Although personally, I would definitely recommend you do that. But still, so yep, it's using that. It is using very clearly Synthi assets. And once again, reviews, very positive, 3000 reviews at 94% positive. Not a single person complaining about, oh, you just use the demo scene, that's real lazy. Nope, the game's actually fun, so people just want to have fun. Another one, One Arm Robber. This one, same thing. You've got, I believe it's the Heist Pack as well, that also has all of these kind of jeweler casing and so on. So yep, look at that money. Yep, that's exactly from straight from a Synthi Pack. You've got all those weapons, all those things. Yep, all of it straight up just from those demo packs. Then on the outside, as they go out, you can see that is literally the Synthi Demo Pack, the City Pack. Yep, this one right here, so for the outside environment to use this, you could clearly see that little building. Then you've got Clown Field 2042, and yep, look at this, this is literally just the Battle Royale pack. Here it is, this pack right here where you have those buildings, those things, and here's the game. Literally the same buildings, literally the same weapons. They probably just bought an asset for the actual first person animations, the first person controller, those weapon handling things. They probably just bought those, combined those with another one, yep, they made a game. And once again, since the game is actually good, players don't really mind it, so reviews, 4,000 reviews at 84% positive. Yet another example, Motortown behind the wheel. This one even has Cinti vehicles. So it's not just characters, weapons, and so on. You can definitely make all kinds of games using all these assets. And again, as long as you make a good game, then players don't mind it. So here it is, very, very clearly Cinti assets. And once again, very positive reviews, almost 5,000 reviews. 
So with this one being a $20 game, that means this game likely sold something like two to four million dollars. Again, lots of assets, they reused a bunch of assets, and players do not mind, they just want fun games to play. So I'm repeating myself way too much in this video because that literally is the truth. Players just want fun games to play, so use whatever assets you need to make your vision come to life. I said it at the end here, I love assets, they help me plug skill gaps. Personally, I cannot do 3D modeling at all, so yep, like I said, that is one of the best ways that it helps me. I've got a decent amount of programming skills, but no art skills. So buying assets from actual proper artists that know what they're doing, buying assets from those people and using those in my game, those basically help me build the best games possible. And of course, assets also help me save time. For example, I could build a great text animator system in about 100 hours, or I can just pick up the text animator from the asset store for 20 bucks. So that's a very, very easy decision. So one great way to ask yourself about whether some kind of asset is worth it or not, just ask yourself, how much is your time worth? If you find an asset that is going to save you 100 hours and cost, for example, 20 bucks, as long as your time is worth more than 20 cents an hour, then that asset is definitely a very easy purchase. So yep, don't be afraid to use all the assets at your disposal to make your vision come to life. So if you're the kind of person, like the original poster asking this question, do gamers really recognize assets? Do they mind it? Are you avoiding using assets because you're afraid that players will call you lazy and say you didn't put in the effort? If so, then hopefully this video helped clarify that. Nope, do not worry about that. Use whatever assets you need, whatever assets you want to make the best game you can make. As long as the final game is good, players do not mind what you use to build. So go pick up some assets and make some really awesome games. Speaking of assets, the Unity Asset Store is currently running their spring sale. You've got the top assets at 50% off and some flash deals every single day at 70% off. If there's anything you need, I highly recommend you browse these two lists. For example, the top rated assets, all of them are currently on sale. I will always highly recommend Field to help you polish your games. Text Animator is another excellent one, very easy to use. If you want to speed up iteration, look into Hot Reload. For some awesome destruction, check out Rayfire. And of course, browse the flash deals page. These are 70% off, they change every single day and you can see exactly when each deal is going to start. So for example, right now you've got 70% off on this awesome cartoon VFX pack. If you want to make some fun, interesting shapes, you've got this volumetric FVFX and modeling tool, this one for just 20 bucks. The editor console pro, this is another hell rated asset, it's one of the top rated assets on the store. This one boosts your console in many, many ways. And again, at 70% off, this one is just 10 bucks. Or tomorrow you've got a really cool FPS star pack. Then also in one day, you've got the own one spring steel kit. So at 70% off, this will be super cheap. This is another really excellent tool to help your game really come alive. And tons more stuff. Again, check out the full page in order to see everything coming and when exactly they are starting. And there's also two bundles that are currently active. There's this one with thousands of really awesome UI elements on really all kinds of themes, all kinds of different art styles. This one is really awesome. It's just 25 bucks and ends in just three days. Or we've got this one with lots of stylized cartoony assets. You've got all kinds of themes from sci-fi. You've got a really nice medieval castle. You've got some middle ages houses, some Texas. You got some characters and lots of stuff. And again, all of it for just 22 bucks. So yep, if you need assets to make your games look awesome, then check out all the links in the description. By the way, I wrote about this in my Game Dev Report newsletter. This is a newsletter that I publish every week. I write about the weekly Game Dev news and any interesting articles that I come across each week. Sign up for free with the link in the description. All right, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.